Now live to part four of the narcissist versus the empath. Now you guys are probably wondering why is there so many parts? Because there's so many good topics and feedback that we're getting from everyone. And then we want to make sure that we always pass along what we have learned so that you guys don't have to pay the price. And my returning guest, my sis, Miss Rhonda T. Payne. All right. So I just want to make sure that the lot the feedback is public and we can get going. Now, today's topic is going to be um do impact. <laughs> and um <laughs> we, as, as, and part three we went into like why why do we keep why do we stay in situations that we know that we're not supposed to why do we keep attracting the same kind of people why do we allow ourselves to think that we can save them and so one of the things is that um we talked about is that ego that pride sometimes well i'm not gonna say all the time that pride and ego is the reason why we hold on and yeah. so it, it leaves a nice bruise. So um, we're going to go straight into um, what you want to take over yesterday about the story of Samson and your revelation and how you got out of your situation and how um, your healing process began. Right. Okay. Well, what um, when we start thinking about with empaths and superpowers, it's not necessarily like we're talking about like we're the X-Men or something like that. It's just certain things that we have. One thing we have is just like, sometimes it's just this knowing, you know, we don't have to, like where everybody else is log logically trying to break things down, sometimes we just know. So what happens is it helps us be able to navigate ourselves through things not because we're looking at all the details where everybody's trying to logistically put things together. Sometimes we just have this knowing. Then another thing too, we have the ability as to where we're good listeners, even though sometimes we talk, but listening is this. When, when somebody leaves you after you've talked to them, you as an empath maybe feel drained because you get, give out. But when they leave you, they feel so good because they're like, you heard me. You may not have said anything, but you right. were able to tune you're, in. You're the only one that understands. You're like, yes, yes, yes. So, but guess what? I did not know that everybody's not like that. So when I choose to go and tell all my business to certain people, it just so happened to be, it's like, oh, you going through that? Oh, man. Oh, wow. What do you mean? And I'm always like, well, I want people to see me. Like I see them, you know what? I give up everything, you know? So you have that as to where you get real people in. You have the ability to rejuvenate uh, or bounce back, you know, with a lot, a lot of, not a lot of extra help or anything like that. Some It's like almost like you um, you go all the way down and you have a rechargeable battery, battery on the inside of you, which is something that's you know everybody doesn't have. So you got all of these. You know, things. like like the good point right. that you're making is that saying that sometimes we need their happiness to be recharged. That's because, exactly it. Because we yeah. know, according to them, we're the only ones that can make them happy. So it's like, wait, yeah. I have this responsibility. Right. To all right. Of a sudden, recharge you and be there for you yeah and, and so you fall for that and thinking like well, i'm the one yeah i'm the one and like and, and, and almost to the point where you will stay depressed until they get back up and you're like hey yeah what? life's good again exactly and when you start looking at that you you and the, and the first thing you do is you neglect your own self mm -hmm. because you're busy trying to because you're because you also feel emotions you can walk into a room um i had to, i had some business i had to take care of today and for the past 12 years i've been going to the same place to take care of some of the same business literally using the same person everything so i will go back maybe every several years or something every time i go in that place i have the same feeling 
Nothing has changed. I've done nothing different. And I was talking to a lady today. I said, insanity is trying, is doing the same thing, trying to get different results. So if every time I walk into this place, I feel the same way, all, I feel the conniving, I feel all this stuff. Why should I think I'm going to get anything different than because I feel it. I don't know. I have nobody has shown me anything, but I did not pay any attention all these years. But since we've been doing these talks, I went in today and everything that I looked over for 12 years was like magnified today, like Rhonda. So all of a sudden I had to pull myself back together and like, OK, let me, you know, come home and recharge. I'm being drained. Even to the fact that I use the same person, I'm like, uh-uh, no, this is not good. But everybody doesn't have that ability. You know, mm -hmm. just like you look up, some people are highly sensitive, and that, but that doesn't mean that they're a empath. Empaths are highly sensitive. But uh, uh, a person that's highly sensitive, they may be able to just pick up on things or whatever. And that, but that doesn't make them an empath. I think it's one to two percent of people in the world are empaths. So you have to find it. Yeah, one to two percent. So everybody doesn't have it. So but this is the thing. When you have a lot of people sometimes that that uh all of a sudden say they have empathetic traits, why uh -huh. they've been around. So say for instance, if I grew up in a narcissistic home, we already know that. There's there there is no empath em, there everybody has empathy but everybody's not an empath. So right. when you're in a narcissistic home, you know that that empath empathetic is not is not there. That uh, um being an empath is not there. But you can come around people that are empaths, and all of a sudden you will see the results of them and how they're getting certain things done by the way that they're doing it you will pick up on their habits and you'll be remember narcissists and people like that are good in, uh, uh, mirrors yeah. a lot of people may think okay i'm highly sensitive or i'm an empath but it could be that you just changed the way you were raised because you saw somebody else raised differently mm -hmm. but uh, but then if you disconnect from that empath you no longer have those traits i see you go back to those traits that you had before you got in contact with the impact. So that's the thing. But going into the story of Samson, this is how I started getting my breakthrough because we're talking about um, how empaths get in trouble. Right. I actually I love, when you were telling me the other day about this, like, like, like your revelation and the version of what you learned about Samson, I was like, oh, wow. tell me, tell me more. Oh. You can, can hear, hear you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Somebody's trying to call. Okay. <laughs> so you were talking about the story of Samson. Right. And um and how we were uh talking the other day about you were telling your revelation. Yeah. I can't hear, so, and then can so you hear, I was, can you hear me pretty good because I can't hear yeah. you that well. Someone tried to call in and I, I can hear you pretty well. Okay. And um well let me and, and what I'm gonna do is I'll tell about the story, then I'm gonna move it and then I'm gonna move back. Well, when I went through my situation, I um realized after a while that what God had given me, everybody could not do that. So I'm like, I started looking around and I started treating everybody like, well, if I can do this, you can do that but everybody does not have that ability. So I'm thinking uh, now, wait a minute, I'm going back over my life. I'm going back over some of the things that I've heard from ministers or whatever, Rhonda, others can, but you can't. So I'm hearing all of this stuff, believing that I'm being judged. You know, it's like everybody else can do things, but I can't, I didn't know why, because I had this special gift. And this gift was not for me. It was entrusted to me. This gift was for me to be a blessing to humanity. It was mm -hmm. something that was bestowed on me. But with me, 
I figured that it was just my gift. So when I went through all of these narcissistic, uh, uh, when I went through this narcissistic abuse and I literally lost the ability to create the things that I was doing beforehand effortlessly. So mm-hmm. before that, I can, if I wanted to open a business, if I want to do anything, it was effortlessly where people would look like, how did you do that? Well, I don't know. It's effortlessly. I can just do it. So of course, now you get into the fact now your ego is talking because you can do things that other people are looking at you as like, you're special and they can't I do it. it. Like, I got it. I got it. Like that. Yeah. That I got it. Yeah. And so what ended up happening is with the story, I, I when I got ready to get back on my feet, I started praying and the Lord gave me, gave me the story of Samson. And I remember watching um, a video of him. It was a movie and about how it really was with Samson. And Samson, his mother could not have a child. So but God blessed her to be able to have it. But she, but he was a, called a Nazarite. So he could not cut his hair. And that was a significant part about it. He couldn't drink strong wine, could not cut his hair. And he was dedicated to humanity. The Philistines were always keeping the children of Israel under their thumb. Samson was going to come to revive them, to uh, to save them, uh-huh. like us with humanity. God has blessed us to be able to do something, and we think we got these special gifts to use them for us. So Samson was very cocky. You might as well say he's very cocky because he was overconfident, because he was strong. He was good looking. He had all these uh, advantages. So what it did is it caused a lot of jealousy from people who didn't have it. And one was the Philistine Philistine king. And the Philistine king, his job was like a narcissist. He was an extreme narcissist. I want what Samson has. He's destroying our people. He's making fun of us. He can do all these other things or whatever, and we can't. So what ended up happening is... The king went on a, a, a uh, um, like the narcissists usually do, they went on a quest to make sure they took Samson down. That was his goal, to get next to him, to see what he could do or whatever. So they started gathering their troops, talk about all yeah. these rumors yeah. and lies, like, you know what she did or you know what he did? As yeah. In the flying and, monkey. and so what he did, he gathered his flying monkeys to, to do his bidding and go and find out what it took for Samson. What was his secret? What was his secret? And it really was a big secret, but it was no secret. So mm-hmm. when Samson realized that he had this ability and people were jealous and they were doing everything, Samson started getting in pride. It says pride comes before destruction and a hearty spirit before fall. So what ended up happening is Samson no longer thought about the reason he had those powers. So all of a sudden now he's playing games. Uh He's playing games with them now. He's playing with their heads. And they would come in and he, they would uh, uh, take and get him drunk or something like that and bind him up, just bind him up. And, and he'll wake up the next morning and everything, you know, and, and what happened is this, when you have that special gift, and we were talking about how narcissists will see you. There's a special person named Delilah that showed up. Delilah knew how to love Bob. Oh, come on, Samson, lay your head in my lap. I understand what you're going through. Oh, everything. So she's kind of drawing him in, intimacy. Tell me about your, tell me how you do this. Tell me how you do this. She was mirroring the very thing she made it seem like she was a good person, but she was a flying monkey. She was set up by the king to find his secret. So eventually what happened is he started pillow talking, told the story of why, what happened. I, it's in my hair. I got these locks. If you cut my locks off, you take my strength. Samson told the secret, woke up the next morning, bound up, and he could no longer shake himself. And that's where it was at. I was at. How is it that I could just all of a sudden I do all of this and then one day I wake up, I can't do it. And I'm literally losing my mind because I can't find out how to get it back. 
So eventually what ended up happening is Samson ended up locked up. He ended up a slave. They gouged his eyes out, everything. cut. You know, because he had his hair cut off. The king came in to Samson while Samson was locked up. He said, now, tell me where you got your power from so I can have it. Now, Samson is blind. He's lost everything. His, he, you know, God removed his strength from him the whole night. Samson looked up and said, it came from God like that. So it's like the king walked away sad because he knew he couldn't have it. Eventually, what happened is Samson prayed, give it back to me. It came around as to where his, and I, that's why I got hair grows back. But like uh, my mom was saying, everybody's hair don't grow back. So, you know, you got to give it something different. So. I can say this with an empath, power comes back. It does. It comes back and it comes back stronger than it was before because you deviated from the mission, but now you understand what the mission, why you were gifted, mm -hmm. why you have all of this stuff. So now you understand. And then all of a sudden, Samson ended up going supernova and destroying him and his himself and everybody else. So um, I think you're out of here. Where are you at? I'm right here. Okay. Yeah, so, I don't see you there. But yeah, so, but that's what ended up happening with me. I began to pray. If you could get one, just restore back the power that I had. I promise I'll take and do what I'm supposed to do with what you gave me. You know, so that's kind of where it was at. I'm going to, I'm not, I can't hear you. Can I just move it right quick? If you can give me like one minute. Uh-huh. So okay. one of the things that I'll talk while you, you do. Um, so what she was saying with the story of Samson is that he lost everything. So he thought it was like the end of it. Right. So. All right. Um, one of the things that. um I was saying about the story of Samson, like he lost everything. 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 And that, and we always feel like we can't come back from that. Right. Because right. You really do feel like everything that you had and all of a sudden is gone in like pretty much 24 hours. You're like, how did I get here? And you're yeah. so mad at yourself because now you start seeing like, like almost the, like the setup. And you, and you yeah. see, and then all of a sudden, like, but there was one thing that you said to me the other day to where like once we once we realize the setup right and once we have this once we get over this feeling of stupidity of being used there was yeah. one thing that you said like one thing that we have to recognize obviously it's not going to be you know you're not going to get your power back within 24 hours right oh no no <laughs> but why don't you why don't you go ahead and talk about the hair though Okay, so I I won't say I, I'm gonna say hair because that was the the what's the name that I used the the thing that well, yeah, I used. Talk about, but, about your story. But power. But what I did is last year, um, well, year uh, about about maybe a couple years before that. That was when I was in the situation where I was ha having a nervous breakdown, and nobody knew. It just so happened to be that my mom had sent me a um. Uh, had somebody bring me a CD by Bishop T.D. Jakes. And it was talking about, you know, you left your first love. It was talking about the prodigal son. You know, it's noble that you did all this stuff for people because I blessed you to be this. But you forgot me and you forgot you forgot you and you forgot me in you. So you done did all these nice things for all these people. And a lot of stuff I really didn't tell you to do. You did it on your own. And that's why you're drained. But you forgot to go and reload. So you kept giving out and you forgot to reload. So now you're sitting in the middle of a bed rocking, rocking. So eventually what happened is it's, I just started spiraling. I, I, I mean, literally the decision making. I had never made decisions that bad. I'm sitting here. I have more lives that I'm responsible for, more responsibility, more everything. I was already at the top of my game the whole night, mind you. When I first came in contact, it took six months for my hope, for everything that I had worked for all those years to reverse. So my birth for everything in me, my virtue, everything was drained within six months. So I didn't realize what I was dealing with. 
but my power, my hair was gone. And literally, I had, it was a situation with my hair last year. I'm going to tell you about that. But um, so everything started spiraling, 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 and possessions, the whole nine, you look up. And last year, I just started, I, you know, before that, I started really praying, but I had to disconnect. Mm -hmm. Start disconnecting from the very thing that was draining me. Because if you plan on getting yourself back, you cannot be connected to the very thing that's sucking the life out of you right. while you're doing it. You're going to have to man up and make a decision as to where you know that this is what's draining you. Now, an empath, we know what it is. We know who it is. And we also know how to deal with it. Sometimes we just have that oxytocin. We just have that thing going on. That addiction. That shame, that pride. We have all that stuff going on and we just don't want to make that move. Mm -hmm. But I had to make a choice. So what I did is I started telling the story. And that was me having to um, humble myself. Because remember, pride before was how I worked. You know, I worked with pride. But now I've got to humble myself. Let me start telling the story about what really happened to me. And it was so surprising how everybody was like, we never knew you yeah. hit it well. You know, you were so strong, you hit it well, which is not a good thing because what it was showing that my pride was standing out so much that- It's almost I like a shock, right? It's a, it's yeah. a shock like, Wait a minute, you, you mean like, you, and this is why like none of us want to expose that part because yeah. everyone always assumes that we're doing so well. Right. And so, and you're, and you're like, oh, I can't expose that because everyone assumes that I'm good. So the yeah. more that you hold that in, the more it's actually driving you more insane. It is. Yeah, and what happened is like, even in the story of Samson, he, they gouged his eyes, they burned his eyes out, right? Mm -hmm. his ability to see. So what happened is I could no longer see. All, you know, my path was no longer clear. Before, I just knew. Now everything is a fog. Everything is a cloud. Everything is second guessing. Everything, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so I'm like, and then you operate in a lot of fear where before you had faith and you were all, you felt like you were, um, Resi uh, not resilient, but you felt like you were invincible, that nothing could bother you, that you was above everything. And sometimes you, because you could actually feel, sometimes you felt like you were actually like that. Yeah, absolutely. Sudden, yeah, all of a sudden, one day, you no longer have that feeling again. You're looking over the side of your, uh, the side of your shoulder, you're hearing voices, you're hearing footsteps in the night you can't sleep you can't you barely can eat you don't know who's your enemy you don't know who's your friend you're looking at where before your finances were at the top and now you're scraping the bottom trying to make ends meet so you and you're trying to figure out how did i get here while knowing how you got there right that's the hard part yeah. is having to face the accept the, the responsibility I there, got there. there is a level of ego that we don't yeah. want to talk about like yeah. but no, I'm a nice person. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have pride because the 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 definition of pride has such a like so many definitions. Like, yeah. well, a narcissist is prideful, absolutely. Yeah. But an empath has an ego as a, but I can fix them. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, yeah. That's no, exactly that's not your job. And we don't want to. And then our biggest thing is we don't want to ask for help because we know better. Because we got to fix them. Yeah, yeah. And so, and, and and what, in order for us to be able to ask for help, we're going to have to show that we were weak. Oh. That we dropped Ooh. the ball. Yo, let me just jump on this real quick. It is the one thing, I don't know about you, but it was the one thing where when you're, when you're, when you're detaching from a narcissist, it is the one thing that you don't want to do because <laughs> you know it is the one thing they cannot wait to throw in your face. Like, yeah. told you it was her, told you she was messing, ruining my life, and you're just like, I just want to get my mind back. Right, right. And yeah. you 
and you don't want to even admit it because you know they're going to throw it in your face. It's kind of like like continuing sand in your eyes. But yeah. what I can tell you is that is all temporary. Yes, they, they are going to do yeah. that. And so that's why people are like, well, I don't want my business out there. And you, you know, the, 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 because they have to, nurses have to protect their image. Yeah. Their image to where they have to be the victim. They have right. to continually be hurt so that someone else replaces you with the, oh, are you okay? And then they find that, that, uh, that person that will fix it for them. And now they, and now they will get to look at you were like, well, you didn't get to fix it, but this person can fix right. it. Well, that's only a matter of time. And you know what? It was funny. That's only a matter of time. Situation, when I was going through it, um, during the time I was doing the process, I was able to detach from a lot of relationships that were not good for me. So by the time um, I was coming around really telling the story, I was very selective to who I told the story to. Uh -huh. So those that were around me, were not only were they in, they were in shock, but I saw them mirroring my compassion. Uh -huh. they, you know what? Because I believe really what it was, they were just so shocked. Like, you know, normally we come to you, you know, whenever we have a problem or stuff like that, we come to you, but we didn't even realize you were going through all of this stuff and you were still there for us. And then, and then how dare you say you want help? Because they were like, well, what did you do wrong? Yeah, yeah. And, and so the thing about it is, but you know what I started doing? I started telling them, I did this, <laughs> I did yeah, this. That, you know? That's why I say, like, you got to call yourself out. In order to, yeah. you got to yeah. call it's something. I mean, yes, it's going to suck in the beginning, but that's short term. That's short term. Of thinking. course. Of Long course. term is the most amazing piece you're ever going to yeah. get in your life. And I, I can testify, you can testify. Yes. Because once you get out of that, whew, and you come to that long term piece, by the time you're 40, 50, 60, 70, you still have that peace. Yeah. And you know, the biggest thing that I learned about this, I'm special, but I'm not above. I'm, I'm human. Mm -hmm. I'm not a demigod or anything. I'm human. I'm capable of error. I learned to give myself a break at times. I don't have to be perfect. All right. I don't have to. I can, I, I, you know what? The, I been I took the challenge and then all of a sudden I just I bought so many donuts and cookies <laughs> and everything would kick my legs up. And at first I was like, oh, I cannot tell Zenaida. I cannot tell her. All of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling this. And then I started getting in my head, having all these thoughts, knowing, and you're like, are you walking? It was hard for me to tell you that mm -hmm. because I know better. I started off. And the first thing you told me, put the jumpsuit out. I put it away. You said, give it 90 days. I was like, oh, I'll get this done in 30 days. You said, give it 90 days. So when it's all said and done, I was going to push myself. But what I had to learn about this, Rhonda, other people know more than you when it comes to certain things. You can receive from other people. She told you to give yourself 90 days. The reason why it was no cutoff, because... Some people, when they get started, they don't complete it because of the deadlines. And, and then if you got a person that you're pushing against your own ego and all kinds of stuff like that, your ego will tell you, you don't need this. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing results right away. I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. Huh? I'm going to do it my way. She yeah. doesn't know what she's talking about. And, and one thing about it is we have to understand that that is a part of us, that we get in our own way. And the one thing, I, the story I liked about Samson, and I, I, I adopted that, when he had his eyes uh, uh, burned out, he's locked up now. He doesn't have the power anymore. The first thing he said is, I'm sorry. I messed up. You put me down here for a reason, mm -hmm. to avenge the people of the Philistines. I took and I used the gift that you gave me for my own personal use, because I felt because I he was the first, we were talking about he's the very first superhero ever. There was nobody and ever stronger than him or anything. When when you started revealing the revelation of the hair, yes. like that's because that was remarkable to me. 
Okay. I, I'll tell you what I, this is what I was looking for this whole time. I haven't prayed in 17 years, right? Yeah. Then suddenly out of the blue, it was like, write this down. And I was like, oh, so go ahead and talk about your revelation over yeah. here and well, how you got out of it to restore. Yeah. And I, I will share what this miracle happened in my life. Okay. So what ended up happening is this. Last year I did a, a YouTube on selling my soul pretty much because that's what I did. I gave my mind, will, and emotions over to situations. And uh, when God gave me the story of Samson, I re realized in his story, hair grew back. And what that meant that, and as Samson's hair was growing back, his strength was coming back. It doesn't say how long it took for his hair to grow back. It just said it did. So in my own physical life, I was, I used to wear, um, uh, for all of that time, I literally had, um, I had not a, a nice set of, you know, nice hair, but I uh -huh. wore this long weave. I lo lo it was long and I would actually spend a lot of money on it. It was the best of the best, but I was like kind of in bondage to that for all those years. When I finally took my hair down my own self, it went from being down my back to up like to here, to my ears. Mm -hmm. So literally, I it was just cut. I mean, literally, my physical hair was disappearing. So when I really started getting that revelation is like hair grows back. What does that mean? The revelation of that is, even though they shaved his head off, Eventually, it started growing back. So, as the pile, as you're working on doing your uh, uh, your confessions, as you're doing your prayers, as you're doing all this other stuff, your hair or your power is coming back. You don't necessarily see it. Remember, Samson didn't have a vision; his eyes was out. He was locked up, so he couldn't touch his hair. But one day, they got ready to put him up on the gallows. And they were going to make fun of him. And he, and they did not pay attention to the fact that Samson's hair had grown back. They had already forgot where his power came from. This man had his locks already grown back. They never paid attention. All the Philistines were there together. Samson said, God, give me strength one more time. And went supernova and destroyed. the he, For the very thing that he was given the power for, that's what he did. And what I realized is when I began to pray, God, I dropped the ball. I took for granted the fact that you gave me this. Let my hair grow back. Let the power come back. Let the ability to be able to do the things that I did before, let it come back. And slowly but surely, everything- Just like hair. Before. Slowly but surely, just slowly like hair. But surely. That's the thing, because hair if in the natural, when your hair grows, it grows an average of maybe a half an inch to an inch a month. And sometimes you got to cut back or whatever. So hair, you, so you're not going to have hair down your back today and it goes up here tomorrow and you get up tomorrow and your hair is going to be back down here. The, uh, unless you put some, add some to it, that's not going to happen. Right. But slowly but surely, I started realizing that my help was coming back, but it came from the very thing that we're doing now, confessing to the fact we dropped the ball. We so, messed up. I think you made a good point, like when you talked about the hair, like he wasn't he wasn't touching it, he wasn't going yeah. back, he wasn't tampering, yeah. he was locked up. Yeah. So he allowed he allowed growth to happen naturally. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that um to to recover from these type of relationships is to allow it to, like you have to allow yourself to grow yeah. allow yourself to just to be reformed and just don't touch it yeah. don't keep, don't keep yeah. touching the situation no more yeah you, you know, you're not going to fix it right so it's not won't let your hair grow back by me like allowing yourself to be restored yeah yeah cuz you know my biggest thing was was like they said, when Samson, after he had his hair cut off, he, you know, they used to bind him up and everything like that. And he'd wake up and do all this. He had big rocks and he would just pick up boulders and could throw them and everything. First superhero ever. That one day he woke up 
and he got ready to do it and he couldn't do it again. You will feel and like a giant again. When you get knocked down, when the empath gets knocked down, oh, you will come back and, and grow up like yeah. a giant. Because yeah. You're going to realize, wait a minute, I'm back up. Now I know. Yeah. Better. Yeah. So, yeah. Just so you know, we're at 35 minutes already. Are you serious? This, so, I mean, I'm telling you, this is. All right. So, Yurga was a revelation right here. I want to share mine real quick before we go. Right. Okay. So, all right. Mine was out of the random blue, write down this prayer. I'm like, okay, no problem. So I just, I, I heard it loud as clear and I heard it all the time. And then one day I decided to write it down and I was like, all right, cool. Let's see what it says. Let me just start writing. And it says, Lord, hold my hand and guide me to complete your purpose. Yes. Help me and fill me with understanding that I need to move to complete the mission. Only, you know, the conversations that are being held behind closed doors Remove anything and anyone heavy from my life that slows me down from completing my destiny that you ordained. I know it will hurt me, for I thought I knew what love is. Continue to show me what love is and expose me to the ones that really has my best interest and part of my purpose. That was July 2019. I was like, oh, this is a good prayer. I got yeah. it. I got an A team. You know, I got some good friends. I got some yeah. good friends. Man, that prayer, that was the most hurtful prayer I ever said in my exactly. life. Yeah. yeah. I, I even told God, like, yo, bro, what are you doing, man? Like, yeah. whoa. I didn't mean it. Like, right, exactly. you know, people yeah. away from me. What it whoa. This was not, this was not the plan. And I, I'll even I'll even admit when I was in Vegas in this sauna, I shout I I with my hands up in the air, and it, it just became like my discernment came stronger and stronger, and I thought it was punishment. And I remember with my hands in the air, like leave me alone. Yeah. And and it was just like you know what, like tell me I got it. What are you doing? Right. right. Even though I had already had a breakdown back in April 2018, already begging him to help me to get out of this, and here I am thinking I'm good now. I I got friends. I finally feel happy here. Like no. And I always I thought discernment was punishment. Right. And, well, what it what I, after all this you know started unfolding and at. I got my hair back. I got my power back. I got my strength back. I realized that discernment is protection. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And so I since then repented. Like, oh, you're right. You win. Now I, I'm all ears. Okay, yeah. what are you going to do next? What book that, do you want me to do next? What's I heard next? A, a quote the other day, and it says, sometimes self-sabotage is self-protection. Yeah. You say, why do we sabotage everything? Have you ever thought about that you were being protected? That kind of happened to me in 2018. I, uh, my mom was like, well, you need to put everything on the altar. I'm like, oh, Lord, okay, I'm going to put everything on the altar. Literally, I just made a whole altar. I got on my knees. And all of a sudden, oh, hell, bro. I'm like, ah! well, I didn't and mean it. I didn't mean that. <laughs> no. And it was just, and all of a sudden, I was like, okay, I know I'm about to go for a ride because I know how you do it. You shave me if you shave me ball. I, I, look, just just protect me while I'm going through it. Keep my mind while I'm going through it. And uh, I have this book by Michael Pitts that says, "Help me, God is trying to kill me." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I bought the book because I felt God was trying to kill me. And what he when I read the book when I read the chapters, it was like. He'll disconnect you from certain people. He'll disconnect you from certain situations. He'll right. so he's trying to kill those things away from you that are not beneficial from you. I was like, no, I literally took it. God trying to kill me because uh, this. Yo, it, I, I, I had I had non-believers. <laughs> I'm like thinking, like, yo, what is going on? Why is all this happening? And I had non-believers be like, that prayer. <laughs> yeah, and people with you know. They, they saw it. They saw how real God was and removing yeah. the toxins out of my life. And I was like, what? That's that prayer. I was like, yeah. yeah. Like, 
Whoa. After a while, I could no longer cry. I, everybody around me was crying for me. They fell for me. But I was like, I know why I'm going through this. Lord, just give me the strength. I know, But guess what? I knew on the other side, though, uh -huh. because you're going to go through certain times where you mess up. And the reason why I knew it was because I've been through things like this before. And no, this, is, this is my first. This is your first. So you're going to have many firsts. So yes. you're going to get higher in this area. And then all of a sudden, it's like God is like, okay, now I got to do some, some breaking and things like that. Because if you get too hot, you'll no longer need me and you'll forget what your mission is. Right. So when, right. I, when you get up here, I'm going to prune you a little bit. And the pruning is going to hurt. And how I'm going to prune you is I'm going to allow, I'm not going to sin, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to cause, but uh -huh. I'm going to allow situations by your own hands to come into your life. And when they come into your life, this is how you're going to learn your lesson. And you'll right. be greater after, on the other side. So Yo, when I tell people, when I tell people like, nope, Nope, I'm not. I'm done paying the price. Yeah. When, when we had the conversation when I was at your house, I was like, uh, "Yep, what is it? Do I need to know?" I'm done paying the price. Yeah. I'm, I am done paying yeah. price because, and you would hear me say that I am not smart in the situation. Right. The fact that it was all like blind faith. You just there's this thing inside of you that says, "All right, go here, do this, do that, read this," and you're. You don't know why, but you're kind of like listening because you're like, I have no idea what's going on, man. But then all of a sudden you just start following the directions that you're given. And then all of a sudden you right. just start seeing little nuggets, little like gold yeah. nuggets here and there. And then you're like, okay, so if I, if I listen more, I'll get more nuggets, right? Right. So now you realize that this is where your faith becomes increased. Exactly. And what it, I remember, and you kind of have almost like a, a similar experience that I had. So I know how, where your life has got kind of headed. Um, when I got to do my trial sermon, it was called, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. And it was on the story of Jonah, where Jonah had to go. In, and I was like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to tell these people nothing. I don't want to do this. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Then all of a sudden, you come up with this yes. Your yes is needed. That's no different than nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. You said yes. Whatever it is that you need me to do, okay, I need a yes out of you. So I'm going to have to break you in order to get that yes. Right. It, it is. It, it really is, man. If you just really just let go of everything. And it sounds yeah. so cliche. And yeah. it's so like, oh, that's so easy. It really is. Because once you just like, you win, yeah. here it goes. Yeah. Yes. Because according to Jeremiah 29, 11, the thoughts I have for you are good and not of evil. So I know these thoughts for you that I have are good, but you got all these other prayers and these other thoughts that are not good. And other people got things for you. And like you said, there's things going in your prayer, things going on behind closed doors. People had other thoughts. We may not know what they know what they were exactly saying, but God knew. I, I read a meme one time and they said um, the reason why people were removed from your life because you didn't hear this, the conversation, but God did. Right. And so you you're wondering why. Well, God, why did they leave my life? Why did they disappoint me? Because I love you. And I heard what was going on mm -hmm. and I couldn't let you, you be hurt. And I remember praying and praying and praying, Lord, please fix this, please fix this, fix this, fix this. He was, I love you too much to fix this. Right. Some things you're going to disconnect from. You know what it brought you. So why do you want to stay connected to it anyway? And eventually what I did is you I let your hair grow back. back. Yeah, huh? You let your hair grow back. Yeah, I let my hair grow back. I was like, I'm defenseless. I have no, I can't fight it. I'm, I'm done. I'm exhausted. I can't do it. But. I know greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know if I allow you to let me let to let you work on me, all of a sudden hair is going to grow back. Yep, and it, it did. It and will. Naturally so, and spiritually. Yeah. So those for those watching, because we're we're at the 45 minute mark. Oh, okay. For those that are watching, look, that that 
I don't think I'm ever going to make it out of here. Yep. That's a common feeling. We both yeah. can relate. And the thing you is, know. like, me and her never had this discussion before. I didn't even never. know that she was going through this. I don't even think she knew I was going through this. Except for, like, like the psych ward is kind of obvious. But, like... Yeah. Me rocking yeah. in the middle of the bed. Nobody right. knew that. So, Until I had to start talking about it. <laughs> but there's one thing I will say that um, once you let go and you let your hair grow back, that, yeah. that thing that you're fighting inside of you, like it's, it's in you to become great. It's in you yeah. to become powerful. It will come out. It will yeah. come out. And you just have to know that remove your ego and remove your pride yeah. and just let pretty much let go and let God. And it, it will become so much easier and better. You know, a lot of people's breakthrough right now is them admitting That's their it. fault. Mm -hmm. Admitting it. You know what? I, 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 I quit. I not quit on life, but I quit holding this secret. I keep, I quit holding the shame. I quit holding this pride. I keep, I quit holding this ego. This very thing, your blessing is right here. But you got this big old boulder yep. of pride that's protecting everything. But now everybody on the outside see you falling apart. So, but you you believe you're hiding, but you're not. You're living out loud in front of everybody, mm -hmm. but you think you're hiding. You're like Wakanda. You're yep. hidden in plain. You're right there in plain sight. Right. <laughs> Real quick before we we end. Um, when I, before I broke down the first time, right? I thought I hid it very well. When when <laughs> when when people started, like, when my professors, like, we knew, like, something was going on, take as much time as you need, I was like, wait a minute, when did you see that I was, like, not holding it together? When people, people know it before you do. Yeah. So, yeah. it's not like you're hiding it well. People can see it. It's just they're waiting for you to say something. Yeah. But honestly, by the time people see it, that means it's bad. It is. Because we're good at camouflaging everything. Mm -hmm. But when it starts playing on the outside, that means it's gone beyond everything. When people, just regular people, they don't have to be empaths. They don't nope. have to be pastors. They can be just normal people. When oh, yeah. they can see it, that means you've gone to a point of no return. You better do something quick because yeah. now you can no longer hide it. Yeah. True. So, but we're on the rise. Hair goes so, back. Power so comes back. Do empaths have powers? Yes, they do. But you have to know yeah. how to use them. And just know that you will rise back up. Your hair does grow back up. You will become a giant and in the gift that you were given. And just know that your yes is, is needed all the time. Yeah. For, yeah. Your, for your healing and for your next purpose in life. So just thank you for joining and um have a good night good night